to pure blood. And uh, we'll be talking about that in connection with, with health. And um, we'll uh, um, proceed uh, through this and just the importance that uh, it doesn't, um, that pure blood plays in maintaining um, a healthful, healthful body. And we'll talk about that um, as we go through here. Um, so just a reminder that as you navigate any health challenge, uh, you want to enlist a healthcare practitioner that has a philosophy of health that is similar to your own, um, so that you're not at odds in that regard. And uh, that way you can work together uh, to maintain and regain health. Um, so anything that is uh, suggested here are simply tools and education. Um, I'm learning as we go as well. Make sure that you investigate any, any treatments uh, or protocols uh, and do your own due diligence uh, with that. So a reminder that Thomas Edison said the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. <clears throat> So just a circulatory system overview, we usually think of the heart as part of the circulatory system, um, but it services the entire body. And if there's a place that doesn't get adequate circulation, you're gonna have uh, problems associated with it. So it delivers oxygen and nutrients to all the different cells and tissues of the body. It removes toxins and cellular, cellular metabolites and byproducts from activity, so waste products. Uh, carries hormones and cellular messages around the body, and those are created on demand. For example, when you eat something that is high in sugar, it's going to create a uh, hormone demand for insulin, and insulin is secreted and created to respond to that need. And there are other hormones that are also uh, immediately activated upon uh, demand for their production and manufacture. So if there's a tissue that is underserved, whether it be an organ or an extremity or the brain, for example, there's gonna be problems associated with that. And the various places are not uniform in their areas of, um, of non-service uh, or disruption of service. And so different people have different manifestations of impure blood or circulatory system dysfunction. So some circulatory system components, we think of the heart, it pumps and creates a pressure gradient for uh, the flow of blood. The blood vessels are essentially the conduit, if you look at it simply through which blood flows. Some things that are different than conduit or plumbing is the fact that they're dynamic. They construct and dilate on demand, so they can increase flow or decrease flow based on need in the body anywhere. Um, the arteries are those blood vessels that carry blood away from the heart, they carry nutrients, uh, hormonal signals as well as oxygen. Veins are going to be blood flowing um, uh, back towards the heart uh, from a different place from where they have delivered their, their, their um, constituents in the body. So it should say the blood flow back towards the heart. So it's going to have waste and toxins and various uh, hormonal signals that are going to be sent along as well. Capillaries, they serve individual cells and tissues. And they're at the membrane level of, of exchange of ions, gases, nutrients, and hormones. <clears throat> so you can see on the left here, we have three different types of capillaries. We have continuous capillaries. They essentially have uh, junctions that are tight. Nothing's going to slip between them. Uh, they're going to be carrying blood to skin, muscle, and brain tissue. Uh, in the brain, that's part of what constitutes a blood-brain barrier is the fact that they are continuous capillaries. The fenestrated cap capillaries are essentially perforated. Uh, they have holes all through them and they allow larger molecules to pass through the walls of the capillaries rather than just simply ionic diffusion across them. They're gonna have molecular uh, diffusion across as well in places like the kidney, the small intestine. And then we have fenestrated or I'm sorry, sinusoid capillaries. These have very large gaps. They're gonna allow up to uh, cells size. So white blood cells, red blood cells to be able to pass through to different parts of, of the body. And the slow, the flow is, is slow through sinusoidal capillaries. Over to the right, you can see that intermingled along with those capillaries is the lymphatic system in green. And basically as substances diffuse and move from the capillaries into the tissues, not all of that gets back into the venous system. Some of it stays in the interstitial space among all the cells. And they, that fluid then gets um, returned by the lymphatic system, eventually winds up coming back into the heart. So that fluid is 
pumped through the body through muscular action of the body. So walking, muscular movement, motion, one of the critical pieces for exercise. And that is why we have uh, lymph nodes. So it's going through the cellular tissues and coming back to the heart and being filtered through those nodes as it moves up. So it comes back to the circulatory system filtered. Edema uh, often takes place when the lymphatic system isn't functioning um, appropriately, ends up having additional, um, also known as dropsy, additional fluid that can collect in lower extremities if there isn't uh, adequate uh, flow of lymphat lymph back to the heart. So in Leviticus 17, 11, uh, it says that for the life of flesh is in the blood. So the blood purity is, is very important. Um, at uh, creation.com, life is in the blood. Uh, there's an excellent article there that talks about uh, the, the life that is in the blood. Uh, so you thinking back to the Levitical system, when the lambs were slain, there was blood that was, was uh, put in different places in the sanctuary system. And there was also when people, the children of Israel would eat uh, lamb, they would actually remove all the blood. So the blood, the life is completely gone from um, the flesh that they would have eaten, much different than meat that is eaten in these days. So from councils on, on diet and foods, uh, there's a quote here that those who claim to believe the truth are to guard carefully the powers of body and mind so that God and his cause will not be in any way dishonored by their words or actions. The habits and practices are to be brought into subjection to the will of God. We are to give careful attention to our diet. It has been clearly presented to, to me that God's people are to take a firm stand against meat eating. Would God for 30 years give his people the message that if they desire to have pure blood and clear minds, they must give up the use of flesh meat. If he did not want them to heed this, this message, by the use of flesh meats, the animal nature is strengthened and the spiritual nature is weakened. We want to strengthen our spiritual nature and weaken our animal nature. We want to be under the, the will of God and his guidance. Similar, similarly, we have another um, quote here, uh, a multitude of women are nervous and careworn because they deprive themselves of the pure air that would make pure blood. And this could be men too, but this is particularly in the context of women. And of the freedom of motion that would send the blood bounding through the veins, giving life, health, and energy. Many women have become confirmed invalids when they might have enjoyed health. And many have died of consumption and other diseases when they might have lived the allotted term of life had they dressed in accordance with health principles and exercised freely in the open air. So this is uh, from Councils on Health um, and particularly talking about the, the uh, benefit of pure air being essential to pure blood. So we wanna have uh, pure oxygen that we're breathing, not pure oxygen, but clean air. And non-restrictive clothing, it's not as much of an issue today, but it can be a problem. People wearing tight clothes back when this was written, there are many people wearing corsets and other very tight fitting clothes that uh, particularly women that constricted the flow of blood throughout the body and caused dysfunction because of that restricted blood flow. So anything, clothing can restrict blood flow. Uh, and it's important to, to maintain that uh, surface level blood flow as well. And when we restrict blood flow, it essentially uh, is what we call congestion. And that can manifest itself in different ways. So we usually think of congestion as, as a mucus-based congestion, but that mucus-based congestion can be derived from impure blood and uh, non-serviced areas of the body. So it can actually cause organ level congestion, which over time can lead to organ level disease. One way to improve um, circulation is a foot bath. So for example, if you have a headache uh, that's due to a circulatory issue on some level in the brain and by heating the feet up, the red basin there indicates hot water. It's going to draw um, the blood down to the vasodilated uh, feet and uh, away from um, the head and just change the dynamics of the blood flow through the body, keeping the uh, upper areas cool, wrapping the individual in a blanket. Uh, and so that's basically the, the underlying basis of hydrotherapy is drawing and moving and, and changing the, the way the blood flows through different areas to allow there to be a greater movement of 
toxins away from the body and or a particular organ area that isn't functioning um, as it ought to. So here's some different areas of hydrotherapy and aiding blood congestion. Uh, so we have the foot bath again on the upper left here and the gentleman <clears throat> there uh, with the hot foot wrapped, have a cold wrap. You can do that same thing in a lying position um, in a bed. Um, this is a kind of a full body fomentation. So cold compresses on the head, fomentation on the chest and then a hot foot bath. Um, and then there's the heating compress that can be done on, on a sore throat. So cold vaso restricts or constricts and heat vasodilates or opens up the blood vessels to allow uh, greater blood flow in an area. <clears throat> so those can be useful tools in directing the flow of blood. Now some causes of impure blood, uh, essentially uh, a bad diet, a wrong diet, um, constipation, so not being able to rid your body of, of waste through the colon effectively, overeating, can cause impure blood. So essentially you have too much food to process in between periods of time uh, or food combinations that ferment in the stomach that can cause a toxic situation as well as an impure blood situation. Devitalized food, which can come from a variety of different sources, um, overcooking it. So on the bottom, bottom lower right here, we have some dead broccoli that was overcooked. And also re refining of grains can do the same thing. So I have some pictures of some seeds here. So corn meal is typically just this outer part here, the endosperm. Uh, it's usually been degerminated. So this is where the vital part of the, the corn is. Same for wheat. So the endosperm is the part that is <clears throat> ground into flour and refined. The germ and the bran are both parts that are nutrient dense. And typically that's, that's pulled away along with its various nutrients. And largely that's because of taste factors and longevity of shelf life associated with them without the germ and the endos or the germ and the bran. Um, so going through those different refining processes, polishing uh, and refining, taking the eyes out of potatoes, there seems to be a nutrient rich and dense area in those areas um, that devitalizes food. So it's important to maintain the vitality of the food that, that we do eat. Improper breathing. So if we don't breathe deeply and to our entire lung capacity, we will have a tendency to become uh, less uh, or more congested uh, and not have adequate oxygen, oxygenation of the blood. If we also sleep in an inadequately ventilated room, so all the windows tightly uh, closed up, a larger room is better, uh, but you're going to have Moisture that's going to be uh, just from your breathing is going to collect in the room. It's best to have good fresh air circulating through the room during a night's sleep. Just helps keep the room from being stuffy because um, that ends up, if you're one place for a long period of time, eight hours overnight, lots of carbon dioxide is going to be breathed out. And if you have no air circulating, um, that can cause an impure blood situation. A lack of exercise. So exercise is important in moving metabolic waste out of the tissues, uh, particularly aiding the lymph moving back up into and towards the heart because the squeezing of the muscles in the legs squeezes the lymphatic vessels and squeezes the lymphatic fluid up the body towards the heart. So basically your muscles, the activity that you're engaging is helps you to fight gravity, not you, but the lymphatic system to fight gravity and push the lymphatic um, fluid back to the heart. So your lymphatic system has valves in it that prevent backflow, essentially like a check valve. So poor beverage choices, any kind of impure water, any alcohol-based um, beverages, uh, sodas, tea or caffeinated beverages, your, your brain is 90% water and those things will affect brain function. Also your emotional state can affect the purity of the blood. So worry, fear, anger, unhappiness, hate, it all alters circulation. And um, if you can give me just a minute here, uh, alters circulation and can have an effect on uh, the purity of the blood. So skin, make sure it's un, uh, uncongested, make sure it's not uh, dirty. It's the largest excretory organ, so it needs to be able to uh, excrete efficiently. And then make sure that your emotions are in control. The fight or flight has a, has a um, capacity to drive blood to the core of the body um, and uh, shunt 
the blood away from the, the surface of the tissues, tissues of the body. Essentially, it prevents it's, it's your body's damage control mechanism uh, to prevent you from bleeding out from cuts, um, but enabling the, the um, organs of essential function to function as they should in an emergency situation. But if we're constantly in a state of emergency, that can have a long-term detrimental effect in our life. Um, <clears throat> So some symptoms of impure blood. So it has a wide range of symptoms that are seen. Uh, pimples, boils, skin discoloration can be a, a, a sign of impure blood. Jaundice, headaches, drowsiness can be a, a sign of that. Uh, premature aging, wrinkles, insanity, interestingly enough. A short fuse. Um, so going, having, uh, you know, anger quickly. Nervousness, intentional frowning can actually cause uh, problems uh, or be a symptom of impure blood. Uh, thinking evil of others, uh, gray hair can be a symptom of impure blood. Hair loss, blindness, hearing loss, stiff joints, and various body aches. So all the symptoms will be aided when the blood is purified and moving through your body in an efficient manner. So it's interesting that it's kind of a, almost a syndrome as opposed to an actual uh, diagnosis per se of a simple symptom, uh, which is true for many types of disease processes. So steps to purifying your blood. So number one, eliminate all the harmful food and drinks. So no uh, coffee, tea, soda, alcohol, anything caffeinated. Uh, so like energy drinks, et cetera. Uh, food should all be um, uh, whole food and plant-based. You want to, uh, all processed food and, and white flour should be eliminated. And cane sugar is the worst form of sugar to uh, consume and eliminate the use of free fats, oils and lard, etc. You want to make sure your bowels are moving efficiently. A laxative or high herbal enemas can help cleanse the colon. Plenty of pure water should be consumed to help maintain the volume as well as the purity of the blood. Exercise, so exercising, we talked about how that's beneficial as well as the consumption of pure air, and then adequate rest in good ventilation. So make sure you don't have stagnant air. So some simple herbs that aid purification um, can be both in capsules or tea form. Echinacea and red clover are very, very helpful. We'll talk a little bit about them um, here in just a moment too. Um, so in powdered form as a capsule or as a tea. Um, and it's the blossom of the, of the red clover. You want to make sure that you activate the skin on a daily basis. So a cold bath in the morning with a vigorous Turkish towel rub. So that's a, a rough, a rough uh, coarse towel increases the circulation at the skin. A hot shower, a bath daily, uh, and washing well with soap cleanses the skin and vasodilates the tissues. And you can end with a salt glow. So rubbing down with salt also aids the circulatory system, opens the pores, and activates the skin. A massage head to toe can also be helpful, concentrating on the neck, upper spine, and feet. And another thing that can be helpful is a fruit diet for one week. If you don't have a lot of fruit available, um, you can do the same thing with a vegetable diet. Make sure you're eating lots of leafy green vegetables, carrots and beets, etc. Um, you can use the, the veggies uh, raw, grated, or baked. Um, one broccoli stalk properly cooked has more vitamin C than orange juice. So carrot juice is really helpful. Uh, potatoes, you can actually live on potatoes. They did, a, uh, they did a, some research on potatoes and found that they have an adequate nutritional profile that you can live on just potatoes alone. Uh, lots of ways to fix them. But they do get kind of boring after a while, so they did add a little bit of flavoring having just potatoes. But uh, it was shown that uh, you could do that without nutrient deficiency. There's actually a lot of vitamin C in potatoes as well. So Ezekiel 47, 12 says the fruit of the tree is for man's food and the leaves for his medicine. So there's a lot of different blood purifying herbs. Uh, I highlighted a few here um, with the stars that are locally abundant, um, like dandelion, burdock, chickweed, uh, fireweed is just coming up in our greenhouse right now. Nettle uh, is, is just fresh out right now. St. John's wort, cleavers, uh, also known as uh, bed straw or sticky weed. Echinacea, white clover, sorrel, red clover is very helpful. Uh, wild organ grape, blue flag. And there's some other additional ones too. If, if they're uh, present in a locale that you're in, <clears throat> they could be useful in addition. Let's look at chickweed. Chickweed is, is a very common weed in fertile soils. Uh, it's very hard to get rid of, um, but it actually is good to eat. Um, it's good for blood poisoning. 
take it internally as a T or apply externally as a poultice. For example, if you have like, um, sometimes you can see the blood poisoning going down uh, a streak in the surface of the skin. You could use it as a poultice on the surface. For the tea, a heaping teaspoon of the chickweed, steep for half an hour in boiling water. So that could be fresh or dried chickweed. And then drink three to four cups a day. Uh, and then a warm cup just at bedtime to help uh, purify the blood. You can also use a powdered form, one to two capsules per day. So chickweed, while being a weed, is also a very abundant and beneficial uh, medicinal plant. Fireweed, very common around the Pacific Northwest. The entire plant is useful. It's good for a, a fever remedy and a tonic, which is just general health, and as a blood purifier. So you can use it for one week at a time, then take a break. And uh, uh, so intermittently use it. It's not something that should be used continuously for a long duration. Uh, it can be used in a capsule form uh, along with food. So a tea can be made from a one heaping teaspoon, which is typically the, the ratio that's used in a cup of boiling water. For most any herb, it's one heaping teaspoon. 30 minutes steeped, and then drink it cool, one to two cups a day, just using it at a swallow at a time. And there's actually a lot of different other therapeutic benefits associated with fireweed as well, but we're just focusing on the blood purifying aspects here at this time. Red clover blossom is an excellent blood purifier. Uh, Mrs. White used uh, red clover top tea daily and advocated it. It's a mild, pleasant tasting tea. It can be used in a powdered capsule form in addition to the tea or along with that. Uh, lots of different benefits that we've talked about at a previous uh, presentation, but cancers benefit from it internally and externally, as well as being a blood purifier. So you want to um, wash an external cancer with the tea, and you can drink the tea as water. So you can use it as a, as a topical wash as well as an internal uh, application. So that could be helpful for things like melanoma and the like. So harvest those blossoms in the summer, uh, dry and store them through the winter for use until the next uh, harvest season. Dandelion, you can use the roots and leaves of dandelions. It contains 28 parts sodium. So it's kind of like celery in a way. It actually has a fairly um, high level of sodium salts, but those salts are very helpful. The nutritive salts purify the blood and they actually help to alkalize the circulatory system. Your body does a very good job of maintaining the pH of the blood. If it moves out of parameter, in, in its uh, pH, you've got problems. Um, so the pH of the blood is actually fairly constant. And in order to, order to do that, if you're eating high acidic diet, it'll actually buffer that blood with the calcium from your bones. One reason why high protein diets, particularly animal protein, tend toward osteoporotic conditions because the body is constantly having a calcium drain as a acidic buffer of the blood. So as a tea or capsules, you can use the capsules uh, one capsule three times a day. Echinacea, another good blood cleanser, excellent blood cleanser, also very helpful in blood poisoning. You can use it as a tea form or in a capsule form. It works well when combined with myrrh. Stinging nettle, one of my favorite plants. Uh, while it has the sting, it also has lots of therapeutic benefits beyond blood cleansing, but it's a very good blood purifier, especially the green leaves right now. You can use them in the spring and in the summer. Uh, cook them like spinach and just eat them like spinach and they, they are excellent blood purifiers. So the tea, one teaspoon uh, in boiling water, again, steep for 30 minutes and, and drink. So very um, helpful components to stinging nettle. And then uh, wild Oregon grape, you use the root, a very good blood purifier, and blue flag, which essentially is the blue iris. Uh, so the, the bottom picture over here is the berries of the Oregon grape and the flowering part of the Oregon grape with its yellow top. So the blue flag, you're using the rhizome, which is essentially an underground stem, much like a root. It's just a botanical difference. And it has very relaxing as well as stimulating effects on various organs of the body and very good for blood purification. So we focused on a few different specific herbs. There's a whole lot more uh, that are potentially beneficial, that are indicated as, as being beneficial for purifying the blood. But maintaining pure blood is an essential part of maintaining a, a healthy life and bringing your body from a state of disease back into a state of health.